I've been tagged in Heretic. Why? Because I found a, a weird result. Let's, let's say that you just walk on a road and you find something that shines and you pick it up and then here's a diamond, you know, and you go home and say, look, look, I found a diamond on the road. Nobody will laugh at you. That's glass. I mean, wait a minute. You can't find a big diamond like that on the road. Yes, but it is a diamond. And then you are tagged a crazy... The story is the, is the following. There was a, an MD in my lab who was doing classical research also. And once he told me that he, he was an homeopathic doctor. And I said, fine. Then he came back and he said, do you mind if I try to dilute uh, some of our reagents and see if they do something on cells? And I remember vividly, that was 19... 82 or 83, that I told him, okay, look, uh, do it, but this is water. It's going to do nothing. The very first thought was that there was an error. But when I got the second set of data, I had the feeling of setting the foot in a completely unknown world, something that, that was so strange that I couldn't even envision what was going on. We know that there is nothing that can make basophil degranulate by themselves. And therefore, if they were degranulating, if they were disappearing, is that something specific happened to them. But this something specific, specific was water. And this was flabbergasted. After two or three years of experiments, we reached the conclusion that we could indeed obtain specific biological activity uh, with a trigger that had been diluted billion, billion, billion times, for example. So there was no possibility that any molecule could survive in this solution. Uh, therefore, we had to envision the fact that everything was going on as if water was capable of memorizing the molecule it had seen at the beginning of the dilution. And billions and billions and billions of dilution after, it still knew with some process that it had seen that molecule. And hence was coined the expression, the memory of water. But Benveniste battled on. Within a year after his condemnation by nature, he had begun a new series of experiments that were to lead him even more deeply into heresy. He bought a set of standard laboratory apparatus for testing new drugs on animals, using the hearts of humanely killed rats. With this setup, the effects of drugs on the heart can be precisely measured. Benveniste wanted to use it to test his memory of water theory. Could a drug, homeopathically diluted to the point that it was only water, behave like the original drug? Astonishingly, Benveniste said the results showed it could. We have been working now since um, about three years, and we have hundreds of experiments. And they are clearly demonstrative of the fact that we can get a biological activity uh, very successfully uh, with very high dilution. So it's a major pharmacological effect obtained with nothing else than water uh, in a dilution. The next obvious question is how water can do it? What are the physical mechanisms behind this possibility, the capability of water to transfer a biological information. Benveniste's next step was a leap even further into the unknown. He put some of the highly dilute drug solutions, which had seemed to show the memory of water effect, into this powerful magnetic coil. He wanted to test his hunch that the memory of water might be electromagnetic. So he used the coil's magnetic fields to erase any possible electromagnetic information in the solution. He then retested that solution. It had no effect on the heart. To Benveniste, that meant water did have an electromagnetic memory system, like a tape recorder. It was very, very clear that water was, in fact, a, a liquid magnetic tape. And if water was doing this job in our test tube, it's because it was doing the job 
in nature, in your own body, uh, between your own cells or my cells and my molecules. So it remains that um, we have now practically the, the proof that water is doing this kind of job and that we might have uncovered the, the language of molecules, which is a, a kind of a step forward in science. Convinced of his discovery, Benveniste became obsessed with a new idea. If water was like a magnetic tape, could he record something directly onto it? Like the effects of a powerful heart drug. So now you are about to witness uh, one of the first trials we, we are doing to attempt to transfer a biological information uh, via an electronic, an electronic device. This is uh, what we call a, a mother ampoule, an ampoule mère, uh, which contained a toxin, something which is toxic to the heart. The activity that is emitted by this compound, which is most probably an electromagnetic field, will be picked up by a coil, which is under it, amplified, and about the same way as a telephone receiver will, will send the voice transferred to this coil that will confer the same activity to this uh, water plus salt. Uh, hopefully it will uh, be endowed with the new activity and therefore we hope to show that we are capable of transferring a biological information via an electric uh, system. It was a final desperate bid to obtain what he thought would be clinching evidence for the memory of water. He had now connected up a heart rate monitor so he could watch the progress of the experiment in real time. First, the heart was given just water. Nothing happened. Then, the magnetized water was injected. What is remarkable with this, uh, this data is uh, you can see immediately that this heart is in complete arrhythmia, as if we had injected a toxic compound to this heart. In fact, this heart has been injected with distilled water that has never seen the molecule, has never been in physical contact with the molecule, has only received radio waves, electromagnetic signal, has acquired the full capacity of behaving exactly like the original track. In other words, we show with this experiment that we can if I wanted to be a little pompous, I would say, for the first time in the history of mankind, we can transfer an, a biological information to a magnetic kind of liquid tape, which is water. This is not surprising to us, because we know since um, two years now that what we have done in the high dilutions experiment that were published before is in fact to transfer to water an electromagnetic information. This indicates that biological molecules um, emit specific radio waves, and it is via these radio waves that they communicate. He allowed himself to fantasize about the implications. One day, not very long, we are going to get our drugs uh, on the phone. There is no reason why you should, we shouldn't be able to perform this or have uh, a whole pharmacy on a chip uh, on our credit card. But that's maybe going too far. Uh, the first big fight will be to have this data accepted. 